You may have heard the word NoSQL before or big data or maybe both in the same sentence. Do you know how they are related and why NoSQL database are the best when it comes to big data analytics? In this video, I will give you a broader version of NoSQL databases. And at the end, I will show you how to scale a NoSQL database almost infinitely to keep a huge amount of data. So let's get started. It all starts with a relational database. You have columns and rows and you save data like you will do it in a real life with tables. And data are linked using foreign keys. These data are called transactional data or operational data. They are meant to be used almost immediately. It means in the example we have here, the final project link to a customer, we might get into this customer table, get the ID of the customer going to the project table and uh, link it to the project where it's mentioned somehow using this foreign key mechanism. The use case for this kind of table or database are actually extremely huge. You have application, website, blog, and many, many more using relational database to keep data because it forces a certain consistency in the schema of the data that you are saving. For example, we can enforce that a customer could not exist if it is not linked to a project or a project could not exist if it is not linked to a customer. So it means you cannot trade this, this row if there is no customer link to it. You can do that with relational database. And if you want to trade, if you try to trade the project without specifying the customer that actually exists, it will not work. You will get an error somehow. So you can't be as strict as that with your database or your application. But with more and more data coming in, we needed a way to save non-transactional data and maybe archive them for later usage. A uh, relational database are not good at that because when you create a database with a given schema, it is hard to change it later. But analytic data uh, that we need to achieve are not formatted. A company created in 2006 have surely changed the data format multiple times and saving all those data in a strict format is really difficult. So we need a way to save data without having to deal with the schema, just saving the data there as it comes. We can have customers today with location data and tomorrow we decide we decide to remove without any problem or maybe add them a few years later or remove a few years later for some reasons i don't know we need a database that can handle those change without too many hassle and to save a lot of data we also need a system that could scale easily it means we are able to add data in the system almost infinitely and add new database node easily. That is mainly uh, because when we create data lake or data warehouse, most of the data that we load in the data in those data lake or data warehouse are not updated. They are kind of just loaded there. So if you have, if you change something in the name, an archive is supposed to keep it. So we keep both, we don't keep the change. And those um, database could become really, really large quickly. So there's a need to handle that also. And for all those reasons, the new type of database has been created. No SQL database. People are actually confused when it comes to the name. No SQL doesn't mean no SQL. It means not only SQL. And they have been created for storing and making the retrieval of data more flexible compared to SQL database. And the main advantage here is the simplicity of design, which means it is extremely simple to create and update the structure of the data you save in the NoSQL database. The format of your data could be changed at any time with no problem. And they are also easy to scale, meaning adding new nodes is extremely simple. And that is actually because of the way they are designed. People may be familiar with a uh, document database like MongoDB, but there are many, many more NoSQL databases. The following are the different types of NoSQL databases with some implementation. We have like key value, uh, key value database like Redis. I mean, a lot of people know Redis. Uh, document database like MongoDB, graph database like Neo4G, column and object databases. In order to introduce the SQL database, I need to introduce a concept called key value store first. What is a key value store? I mean, people who are familiar with JSON already know what a key value store is. They actually use associative array, if you know, or map data structure, if you are more Java or C++, uh, as fundamental data models. It means um, they all most present data as a collection of key value pair, uh, like the name suggests key value store. 
it means here this key is uh, like an identifier to get this data, this value actually, this value can have many types, it can be integer, string, array, boolean, null, it doesn't matter, you can just save the value linked to a key and when you want to retrieve the value, you get it by this key. An example of a concrete key value store could be maybe an employee data here. Some random guy named Mark, that's a big data engineer with a salary of 100,000 and the age of 33. You can see that this age here is actually an integer and the rest is are uh, uh, strings. This can also be a string without the, the point if you decide to do it like that. The flexible part here is that if you have a relational database, you will be forced to have all those in every instance that you create, for example. So it means you cannot create a person with just a name field and forget all the other part. You can just, just create a name salary and forget all other parts. But it could be useful in some cases to have this kind of flexibility because imagine you created an application today and you want to save all the data coming in your application, maybe for analytics later. You start without taking a salary. And then two years later, you decide to add the salary and then add the age and then add the... You are not supposed to kind of change the whole structure of your data just to support adding, removing uh, keys to your, to your document, actually. And uh, this is one of the reasons why you NoSQL know, database are really, really interesting for saving a large amount of data and add, actually achieve data because you can save whatever you want in there. It will not shout at you saying this is not uh, normal this is not whatever you can just throw whatever you want in there and get it whenever you want with that said um i will introduce one of the most popular document database as a NoSQL database that's actually mongodb i'll just give a kind of bright introduction to mongo database and um, how to scale a mongo database actually the main characteristic of um Mongo database actually or document database compared to relational database are uh, that table in document database are called collections in relational database in in the sorry in document databases and rows are documents it means and document is just a collection of key value pairs that you when when you save a lot of document it became a collection and you can just transform this bunch of key value pairs to any kind of row in a relational uh, database and this collection of row actually table. So this is kind of the translation going from relational to document databases. And uh, this is kind of a concrete example. I will just explain why this is bold. This is bold. Um, you kind of have this underscore ID in most of the MongoDB objects. And this is like the identifier of the whole object. So it's kind of most of the time. Uh, automatically created by the database but you can also define a custom mechanism of creating these random keys depending on whatever you want and um, you can just create a database at not really creating a database inside the document inside this employee table for example with position the name the salary or age or without depending on what kind of data you have and you have this special behavior here is that can embed documents it means insurance in our case here is actually a sub document it can be considered as a sub document so employee have an insurance but the only problem here is that when you embed document it can lead to um redundancy because maybe this insure cool many many employee are kind of insured by the same insurance company and you will have to duplicate it for each comes for each uh, employee and if you want to update it you have to update it in each section or each um, um, instance of the employee but we still have the old fashion we still have the foreign keys in uh, mongodb so the only thing you have to do here is that you just create a, a collection insurance and you insert this document in this collection by and get this id uh, this is a, a type of object id sorry and get this um id and specify it here and in in that way the customer is actually linked to insurance with this foreign key specifying this insurance field so you can do both depending on 
what you want but this is less faster when you want when it comes to retrieve the data than having embedded documents because with an embedded document you have to deal with join and uh, yeah and also i want to specify that when you're in this setup with foreign keys it's really uh, kind of complicated to deal with that in a distributed environment because um, this object that you create here can be saved on one cluster and the foreign key in another cluster so linking them is a bit complicated and also the key that you have here may become completely um, unnecessary like unimportant when it comes to distributed environment because you if imagine you start with a, a database with a lot of documents the customer collection for example and after that you want to scale it and uh, maybe create different cluster like a cluster of different chart when you want to save those customers the late ids that you created before are not important anymore because um the uniqueness cannot be um ensure uh, because you will have to create new documents and those new documents are distributed on different database and those database does not communicate to create a kind of unique mechanism for object id maybe for existing object id so uh, all you have to do here is maybe specifying a good um, shard key and it can be a kind of identifier for the way you have to get some data or not so let's get into scaling noise scale databases with the mongodb example so this is kind of a really really simple introduction i can do maybe another video with a real scenario where maybe i use docker to launch many mongo instances and uh, show you maybe how to create a config server how to set up the router and how to maybe set up the shard and everything just let me know in the comment if it's something that you may want to know but um clearly this is how it works so you have this one terabyte it can be one petabyte or whatever but i think one terabyte is too small um and uh, you want maybe to save it on distributed you know, distributed environment uh most of the concept i talked about in the video concerning distributed file system are kind of replicated here so maybe you can you may need to watch this video to understand some of the concept like maybe replica or something like that but uh, here, for example, you have this collection of documents and what you do is like you kind of distribute them on different chart depending on the mechanism that you have chosen for the distribution. And this uh, mechanism is really important because you can have multiple computers, but if you choose a bad um, distribution uh, mechanism, you may have one uh, chart that's kind of full of data in order that are kind of fancy. So choosing this mechanism is really important so here for example uh we have the router we have the config server and have the shard the route is actually how you call all the shards so you call the distributed shard with this um, um by this router here depending on maybe the key that you provide it will look at the configuration you had at this configuration server and uh, redirect your request to the specific shard that are kind of concerned so if you don't have a kind of mechanism it will have to broadcast it everywhere and the person who responds back with the good data will be like it will just send it back and this is not that good so you have to specify maybe a range or hash function that will kind of get the key hash it maybe you know exactly where to send the data or where to keep the data where to retrieve the data so um yeah i think i said a lot and uh this is kind of simple introduction to NoSQL databases and uh, uh, database scaling i hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching and see you in the next video ciao